Welcome to Reaching Out. We've got a very interesting presentation this morning. We're going to talk about compassion. And the world has too little compassion. They have no love for each other. All too often what happens is people have love only for themselves. And they have no compassion. What is compassion? Compassion is having a concern for whatever is or whoever is around you. I'm going to share a couple of things here. And I'm going to, the text, if you want a text for it, it would be Herbie Hebrews 4, 16. It says, let's therefore come boldly unto the house of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. <clears throat> when you pray, does God give you grace? Does God show you what you need to do? Does God show you where to pray for somebody? Does God show you how to minister to some young person? Does not God show you how to minister to somebody that's really hurting? Or do you stand there and go, Lord, I need help. Duh. There's an awful lot of churches that do that, folks. There's an awful lot of Christians that do that. They don't have a clue what entering the house and the throne room of God is. They say, I'm going to go running in there boldly. Yeah, you are with your hat in your hand. You're going to go in trembling. You're going in trembling and shaking. Look at that verse again. That we may have turned mercy and find grace. We need to find the power of God to help in the time of need. Our world needs it. This virus thing, the pandemics that are coming and going, the economics. We need to have God's grace and we need God's power in everything that's going on. In James 2.12 it says, But though, through, though he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance <coughs> of his steadfast love. You love the person that you cause grief to enough to give them grace? Do you love them enough to give them grace? Or do you love them enough to give them revenge? To kick them when they're down? How many times have you rebuked somebody and went home and boy, I really told him off. Did you go and apologize to that person and say you were sorry that you had to say what you did? Did you have enough compassion to reach out to that person and to touch their heart? Can you show compassion to somebody that doesn't agree with you? For those of you that are Democrats, can you show compassion to the Republicans? Can the Republicans show compassion to the Democrats? Can you show compassion to anyone? Awful quiet in here. Do we have compassion for those people that have demonstrated? Do we have compassion for those people that burned the stores? Do we have compassion for those that pilfered the stores? Do we have compassion for the self-righteous? <clears throat> I go to church every Sunday. Do we have compassion for our enemy? Do we have compassion for anyone but ourselves? Are we so stinking selfish that we can't reach out to someone else with love and kindness? Do we have compassion for the injured and the hurting? Do we have compassion for the aged and those that are in nursing homes, those that are crippled? Or do we look in our coffee cup and say, well, if they had taken care of themselves, they wouldn't have these problems. I know I'm getting right home to some people because how many times have you made those kinds of statements? How many times have I made them? We've all made them. We've all, we've all judged each other in a very negative, uncompassionate, angry sort of way. The Bible says in Luke 6, 36, Be ye therefore merciful as your Father who is it merciful. Your Father forgave you for all of your sins. Can you forgive the person sitting next to you for their sins? 
Can you forgive your ex? Can you forgive your children? Can you have compassion on them? Can you show them mercy? Wow. That's sometimes kind of tough. Matthew 7, 1 and 2 says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. You want misery in your life? Judge your neighbor. You want more misery in your life? Judge your other neighbor. You want more misery in your life? Judge your people in the church. Boy, it's getting quiet. <coughs> we need to quit judging people. We need to start showing people mercy. We start, need to start people showing people mercy and compassion and love. They need it. They need it. And you need it. You know why you need it? Because if you can show compassion to somebody, then God can show compassion to you because you'll get it back. You'll get it back. I had a real shocking experience, and this is one of the first times that this happened to me. They must think I'm getting old. But you know what happened? A guy come. He was a construction worker. He had his jacket on. He had a helmet on. And I'm coming up to the door, and he opened the door, and he stepped back, and he says, let me open the door for you, sir. Total stranger. He was in a hurry. He was headed for the door. I was going to open the door for him. He beat me to it. I couldn't hardly believe it. He outblessed me. He outblessed me. He showed me compassion. He showed me compassion. We need to practice doing that. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to paraphrase a story that Richard told. Uh, Richard's one of our associates. He was in Africa. And he had this a man that was on the street, a beggar, dirty, stinky, blah, 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 tried to buy him lunch in a restaurant there or a little uh, place and couldn't buy him lunch because the owner wouldn't have nothing to do with him, ended up forcing him to sit out on the sidewalk. So he took him home with him, took him to the hotel, cleaned him up, dressed him up, took him back to the restaurant. And the young man ultimately ended up working at the restaurant, and for all we know, he might still be working there. God. He showed him compassion. He showed him compassion. We need to show compassion to these people. We need to show compassion to each other. We need to show compassion to ourselves. We need to be willing to enter the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And we will enter the kingdom with compassion in love. Christ looked at the city and he says, Oh, mercy, you poor people. I love you. But you know what? There's not a stone that isn't going to be turned over. All destruction is coming upon you. He had compassion, and he wept over the city, knowing what was going to, knowing what was going to happen. In 1 Peter 4.10, it says, Each one of us gets a gift. And we are to use it to serve one another. Oh, I ain't going to tell them how to do it. I ain't going to show them where I go fishing. Uh-huh. Getting off the quiet again. Let him find out for himself. That's not showing compassion, folks. That's not showing compassion at all. Let's look at this word, compassion and mercy, empathy and sympathy. Empathy is a strength. It's a term that is commonly used to understand somebody else's feelings. So you go to a funeral, you have a grieving widow or you have a grieving child, and you have empathy for them. You feel for them. Big deal. If you don't do something with those feelings, you haven't really done anything. You haven't done nothing. So then we go to sympathy. Oh, poor baby. It's too bad. You'll get over it. They don't need that. 
they need compassion. Compassion is strength. And mercy. They need somebody to put their arm around them and say, I'm sorry for what happened. I love you just the way you are. God loves you, even if we don't understand why all of this happened. Even if we don't understand it. Do we understand this pandemic thing? No. Do we understand what is going on? No. But you know what? We can show each other compassion. If somebody doesn't want to wear a mask, don't browbeat them. If somebody doesn't wants to wear a mask, don't browbeat them. You know, Zoe was explaining a number of things that happened in those demonstrations. Some people wore masks, some didn't. Some ridiculed those with masks, some ridiculed them without masks. No compassion. And then when their curfew was up and they had to go home, the rioters came in behind them, filled into the demonstration and threw bricks in the store and set stores on fire. No compassion. You know, we got into some real deep discussions on this. Here's deep discussion, and I'm going to share a verse with you that nobody's going to want to hear. Guaranteed. But after the rioters came in and they firebombed the buildings and the buildings burned and so on and so forth, and some of our leaders are encouraging this kind of behavior. There's a verse that we Oh, come on, where are you? I will find it. But the verse says is that we should, even if we are, our property is being destroyed, we should love our enemy. We should show him compassion. That's a pretty tough Bible verse. We need to show compassion to everyone. You know, I watched that movie once on TV. It was it was the story of, of uh, Paul and Peter. And Peter had said this. They were asking him, what should we do? They're killing our people. They're burning the city. And God told him to love them. In the face of that travesty. Show them compassion. They don't know what they're doing. Jesus says, they don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. They don't understand. Compassion is a strength, but it allows us to understand others, that we may be more alike than different. It is easier to seek revenge than offer a hand. Let's just take, for example, somebody that's done, done something wrong. He grew up, and he has never had the opportunity to be discipled or to learn. And the only thing he ever learned was to steal and destroy. So he goes ahead and here's a bunch of people that are demonstrating something. And when they go out, man, I'm just going to go under their cover and I'm going to break into that store and I'm going to rob it. We got any compassion for him or her? We need to have compassion for him. We need to understand what drove that person to doing that type of thing. If you ever minister deliverance, you learned that people have to understand what it takes, what is driving them. We as Christians need to understand what is driving these people. We need to understand what is driving somebody in another church that there's all of a sudden, you've got a church split over who lights the candles. But here's the church, uh, church split in the Democratic Party. In Pelosi's home district. And in her home district, they've got two Democrats running against each other, fighting with each other. Blood, guts, and anything they can. Why? 
because they can't understand what each other believes. They didn't even have a conservative. They got enough votes to even be on the ballot. Maybe the Christians need to understand what's going on mm -hmm. in what the government calls these hot pockets. Maybe we need to start understanding and show compassion to people that have different opinions than ourselves. Get off quiet again. You see, all too often we don't. Let me, let me just go to Luke 10, 30, 35. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers and thieves who stripped him and beat him and took off, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He was another denomination. And we don't work with those people. I have a food pantry, and only people that can come to my food pantry are those that go to my church. That's a sad statement, isn't it? But it happens all over the country. Well, it didn't stop there. So then now, a Levite. And when he came to the place and saw him, he passed on the other side. Well, those stupid people, if they knew how to take care of themselves, they wouldn't have got themselves in this trouble. They were in the same church. They were in the same church. Have you bore the burdens of the people in your church, in your congregation, in your town? Well, that ain't so bad. Then the Samaritan come along, and as he journeyed, he came to where he was, and he saw him, and he had compassion. But he was the enemy. He was another race. God forbid he was a white policeman or a black policeman. Or a mixed security guard or a Spanish person. But he took care of them. He took care of them. We are one blood of people. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on the oil and the wine. He set him on his own animal, his own transportation, took him to an inn and took care of him. He had compassion. Over the years, we've taken a lot of people and we've seen some very interesting thing, things happen. Some good, some bad. But you have compassion on all of them. We have to grow up. Because when we go back to where we started here, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. We need the grace of God to help us when there is a time of need. We need the grace of God to show us we need the grace of God. The mercies of God are endless. They are endless. But here's a verse that I really love. Isaiah 49, 14 to 16. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and the Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? You know, if you've ever watched the, the TV series Bones, or even the, what was the other one that we watched? Doc Martin. Martin. Doc Martin. If you've watched any of those, there are cases where mothers, where their sons have committed horrendous crimes. But the mother still loves the son. The mother has compassion. That's what God is telling us here. A mother will not forsake her children. Come hell or high water. It doesn't make any difference. But then, let's go to the rest of that verse. Yet I will not forget thee. Behold, I have graven or carved thee upon the palms of my hands. 
Your, thy walls are continually before me. Continually before me. I love that scripture too. God has put them on your hands. He has a tattoo of our names on his hands. Hallelujah. First tattoo in the world. Yeah. On God's hands. He won't forget us. He won't desert us. He will love us like a mother and her child. He'll love us like a mother and her child. Jesus Christ, when he saw her, he had compassion on her and said, don't weep. When you have a need and you're really hurting, have compassion on that person. You know, I shared this. There's a lady I met at the airport. Airport. I shared Jesus with her. I prayed for her to get filled with the Holy Ghost. She ended up in Minneapolis, right off of Washington Street there. And she says, she called me here a few days ago, and she says, "Well, they burned my post office. They burned my my grocery store. They burned the police station. They burned the bus depot. They burned everything and some 144 houses or whatever the." count ultimately ended up. And then she says, now they burned my church. What do I do? How do you tell her to have compassion? She has a mother that's in her 70s that doesn't drive and doesn't speak English. This lady is from Peru. How does she get to the grocery store? How does she order on Amazon? What does she eat? What do you tell her? We need to show compassion to people. I don't care what side of this, what side of the politics you're on or where you are, we need to show compassion. When a lady came in here with got four children. We gave her food, she was living in her car and in a borrowed cabin out on a lake out here. <clears throat> Mon two weeks ago, Monday night. We need to show her compassion. We need to clothe ourselves with compassion and mercy, and that's how you enter the throne room boldly. When you can say, Lord, I showed the last 25 people you sent me compassion. And I fed the last 25 people you sent me. And I'll feed the next 100 people you send me. That's showing compassion. How many times we say, don't send those people to me. I've done that. I don't want to pray for any more people. That's not showing compassion. Then you can repent. Showing compassion and mercy is really a big issue. In Romans 20 and 22, uh, 12, 20, it says to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Wow. I should have steak the rest of my life. I've had a lot of enemies. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. I'd never have to buy another bottle of water. How about that, Richard? Never have to buy another bottle of water. For by so doing so, you will burn, you will hear burning coals on his head, or you'll heat burning coals on his head. You see, if we are willing to feed and take care of our enemy, then the only way that God can bless that person is change his attitude because he's not going to pour good things in bad, bad vessels. So he will have to bring that person under conviction and that person will have to change. That's why you be nice to your family people that don't like you. That's why you talk to those that have talked to your ex, talk to your children that won't talk to you. Do that. Just be nice to them. And ultimately, they will change. Ultimately, they will change. I've seen it in my own family. They're changing day by day, bit by bit. And you can, you can edge it in stone because you will enter the, uh, the throne room of God with boldness 
and God's grace will pour out all over you. That's a very important thing because often we think that we have got to, we think that we, we, we just don't have it. Yes, you do have it. You have it because you have it in the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2.24 Then the Lord's service does not be quarrelsome, but be kind to everyone, able to teach patiently, enduring evil. Well, we got a couple of youngsters, new praise leaders. We need to teach them. Williams and Rachel, we need to teach them and show them how to, how to praise God. You do it like the fairy dance. You praise God. We just give God glory for the birds, for the air, for the for the clouds, for the rain, for the grass. We need to be teaching. We don't need to beat on them. We need to love them. We don't need to, to let them run wild. We need to correct them. But we need to do it all with compassion and love. We need to do it with all with compassion and love. On one of these shows, the other guy, they had a, the detective show and they were talking about <coughs> this guy uh, he was the hangman. He'd hung 22 people in his life. And they were questioning him about this. And he says, I always done it right. So that death was instant and without pain. He had compassion. Even in that grisly act. He had compassion. That's a pretty bold statement, folks. So... If you will show compassion, then God can show his power. God can show his power. 1 Peter 5, 3 says that the Christian is not to domineer over those in your charge, but to set an example to the flock. You want to be a big shot? Tell everybody what to do? Repent. You won't get in the throne room. But don't work that way. Take your hat in the hand, and I forgot my hat. I took it out of, I was going to bring my hat. You take your hat in the hand and say, God, here I am, a sinner. Help these people. Help these people. Help these people. These people need help. They need healing. They need friends. Father, I pray that you would bring into everyone's life here today. Those of you that are listening, those of you that are here in this sanctuary, I would pray that you would bring to them friends, new friends, that can show them compassion, can show them love, that they can show compassion and love to each other. Romans 14, 12 says, and each one of us will give account to God. So therefore, don't pass judgment on one another. But rather decide never to put a stumbling block in somebody else's path. Don't slam the door in your neighbor's face. Don't take the parking place. You know, you never seen a fight between two people. There was a fight, a couple of people were fighting over a handicapped place and they shot each other. But you've never seen anybody shoot each other over one guy trying to give the other guy the parking place. We got it backwards, folks. We need to be compassionate. We need to serve each other. We need to set the standard. We need to set the standard. The demonstrators, the godly demonstrators, need to set the standard to change things. Not burn the buildings. Not haul bricks into destroy things, not get in public in the public and say we're gonna do this and do that. Heaven rejoices over every sinner that repents. Luke 15 20 says, and he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him. How many times would you love your sons or your daughters for coming back home. You'd love them every way you could. You'd rejoice. Matthew 18, 26 says, So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I'll pay you everything. 
And out of pity, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. I loaned the money to a guy in a foreign land once. A year later, he paid a portion of it and he couldn't pay the rest. And in a sense, he begged for mercy. He says, Alan, he says, I just can't pay you. I said, forget it. It's okay. Remember that, Wanda? Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you show compassion? He had no way of paying it. What was I supposed to do? Sue him? The American way of selfishness is to sue. I have one of the rentals, is, there's some problems, so I asked the lady to move. And I told her, I says, we'll help you move. She couldn't believe it. I ain't gonna pay rent. I said, we'll help you move, and then she hung up. I will. In fact, I had one in a rental. I moved her. Complete. Everything. Why not? Why are we so afraid to show compassion? God will return tenfold those things that we do. Those things that we do. If you go to Matthew 7, 12, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do to them. If you want somebody to love you, love them. If you want somebody to hate you, hate them. They will do what you want them to do. You want somebody to criticize you, criticize them. Man, now that's getting quiet again. You see, we need, to, we need to do those good things. Show compassion. And then we need to bless the Lord, the Father of mercy. You know, when we go into the, we go into the throne room and God shows us mercy. God shows us mercy in our salvation. God shows us mercy in healing. God shows us mercy in forgiveness. Hebrews 4.16. I'm going to read it again. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Have you shown mercy to somebody today? Have you had compassion on somebody today? We need to have mercy and compassion in all things. It doesn't make it right. And I've said this a hundred times, I'll say it again. It's not what they did to you, it's what you do with what they did. And that's important. If you can show mercy, God can show you mercy. If you can show grace, God can show you grace. If you, can, if you can rejoice and bless the Lord, God will rejoice and bless you. God will rejoice and bless you. He will return what you have given to Him. You give Him mercy, He gives you mercy. You bless Him, He blesses you. That's why we need to teach these youngsters how to praise God and how to bless God. So what if he clunks you in a stick a few times? Big deal. Show him mercy. Why not? So what if he steps on Wanda's foot and she hits a minor key? <coughs> Show him mercy. So what if you sing, you sing like a croaking frog? Show him mercy. We need to become compassionate and, and compassionate about showing mercy and love. We just need to be compassionate. Don't let the fire go out. Don't let the devil put your fire out. That's what it's all about. We need to be compassionate and have mercy on each other. We need to be compassionate and have mercy on others. God bless you. It's been a wonderful day. That is something to think about.